All right, hello astrology lovers. My name is Corey Dowds of Eye of the Veda. Recently I was uh, started teaching a course on the Mercury Avashtas, the Lajitadi Avashtas of Mercury, and I wanted to jump back in on that. So today I'm going to talk about the the ashamed Avashta of Mercury. Now remember, I already did two videos on this, so go and watch the video where I kind of introduced the Avashtas of Mercury. What does starvation mean? What does shame mean? What does delight mean? And uh, what it takes, what formulas and permutations are you know accounted for to make that now <clears throat> now we're going to talk about the shame of ashta in more detail L when a planet is now this just to recap when a planet is in the fifth house and it's also conjunct sun saturn or mars that planet is said to be feeling legita or ashamed now that's just one thing among many other things so don't freak out if you have that there's all, there could be all these other good things going on, but the way we learn astrology, we have to learn it piece by piece. So you're just learning about this piece of the puzzle right now. So that's one way that a planet can be ashamed when it's in the fifth house with one of those cruel planets, because that's just too much cruel energy. And the fifth house has to do with your mind and how you go about managing your life and how you co-create. And then, uh, the other time that this can, <clears throat> this legita or ashamed feeling can occur for a planet is when it is with Rahu or Ketu, and then also is conjunct Sun, Saturn, or Mars again. And now that happens in any sign. And that's usually the more extreme version of the shame. The planets in the fifth house is not nearly as bad, in my opinion, in my opinion from what I've experienced. All right, so... We're going to see examples here in a minute. I pulled up some really cool examples because I'm one of those astrologers who actually likes to test and experiment and research, and that's kind of how you learn astrology. So I don't know what the deal is with some of these YouTube channels that just talk about principles and just preach for like years and years and never give examples because like, yeah, I don't know. Then you're basically not doing astrology. You're not really being a scientist or a researcher. You're just being a, someone who believes a thing. <laughs> you know, so you can do astrology in a religious way from a standpoint of belief, or you can do it from a standpoint of curiosity and experimentation and study and trying to develop discernment in your life. And, you know, Eye of the Veda, that's why it was called that. Astrology was called the Eye of the Veda because it helped you develop your ability to think for yourself and develop discernment. Um, now you're going to see when you study Mercury, you're going to see like, oh, wow, like this is someone who is going to be you know when you when you learn about all of mercury's avashas you're going to basically learn like who is a really good researcher you know who has a really good level of discernment and who maybe doesn't have that so much um so this is kind of a good way to see that or another way to put that is that mercury is about the practice you know jupiter is kind of more of a plan of preaching or other plants even can do with preaching but mercury is more about practice and so we see a lot of preaching in the astrology world about this placement or that, or watch out for this, but then we don't see that many people really just going through examples. So when you want to prove a point in astrology, if you're an astrologer, or if you're going to plan on making a YouTube channel or writing articles or books or things in the future, you're never going to convince anyone by just showing three charts. <laughs> you know what I mean? So can we just stop that? Can we just have a powwow with all the astrologers together right now? I don't care what school you're in. And just say, like, if you want to prove a point with astrology, you've got to use more than four charts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Use at least five, okay? Um, and even that's not a lot. You know what I mean? But uh, we need to show things thoroughly and with research and practice. And that technical side of things is Mercury. So you can see how good someone is at that from looking at their Mercury. Okay, so like I said in the previous uh, video, you know, all the things that Mercury represents will be things that this person, when it's ashamed, will feel ashamed about. So it can be like your friendships can suffer. You can feel ashamed of the friends you have, or your friends can make you feel ashamed of things. Um, Mercury kind of has a lot to do with connecting to people without any sense of judgment. And so when that this Mercury is ashamed, it's not easy for someone to do that. And it's not easy for others to do that to them. And so they have a difficult karma with that. And they have to learn to kind of heal through that and forgive themselves. Um, you know, yeah, so like, uh, 
Mercury wants to kind of make like an informed decision um, a lot of the times and um, make a communicate, request, make a request, express something. And when Mercury is ashamed with those cruel energies, you just can't do that easily. Or when he does, the authorities or the cruel people belittle them or shame them. So um, it's kind of like that. It can be like um, your paradigms, your curiosity, what you're interested in can be um, taken to a very, they can, you know, they can, people will literally make you feel ashamed of it. Um, so let's look at some charts for examples of that. This chart here. Now this is the chart of Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton was like this um, woman that was kind of famous for almost no reason. Um, and, you know, I'm not trying to like sing her praises or anything, but she had like this sex tape that came out and then she was very much like ashamed of that or she was, she, you know, the media kind of shamed her a lot because Mercury represents the media on one level, on a more mundane level. Mercury represents the news and the media and stuff like that. And so we see that in this chart, she's a Sagittarius rising. Mercury is an Aquarius and it's also her Atma Karaka, so it can symbolize her. Mercury is an Aquarius, um, and it is with Sun and also K2. So when a planet is with K2 and Sun, it there's too much of that cruel, intense energy around it, so it feels ashamed. So she has her Mercury ashamed. Also, she has her Venus ashamed, too. So you can kind of, these things will be blending, and you obviously Venus, sex, and everything had to do with her ashamed stuff. So um Actually, I've already done a, a really interesting video on the Venus ashamed in the birth chart. So you can look for that video on my channel and just apply that to her. I might have mentioned her in that. I can't remember. Um, but she would also fall into that position. But we're focusing on Mercury here. So Mercury is the media. Mercury is like, um, you know, the news, the journalists, all the paparazzi. So this, you know, video was leaked. You know, someone leaked it. A friend, maybe, you know, um, Mercury and um it you know it caused a lot of uh shame around her you could say you know what i mean so just to kind of a quick simple example paris hilton a lot of people know who that is um i remember when i was younger it was like a big deal in the news and stuff um because you know the news doesn't care to report real news of all the amazing things that probably happened that week um nina simone all right so this is the chart of nina simone wonderful uh wonderfully interesting and fascinating person. Um, she was a really cool musician, a very loud, fiery, like um, kind of compulsive um, musician, but she was a young black woman and growing up, um, she really fought against injustice quite a bit, against racism and just in this, injustice in the civil rights movement and things like that. And um, like as an example, I always thought it was so cool um, that she she was a musician. She was talented at piano in her church or in her school. She had some recital and her parents were black and were sitting in the front row and this white couple came in and they like made her own parents. That was her kid. They made her get up and get to the back and put the white couple there. And she just refused to play. She just stopped when they did that. She was like, I'm not playing. And she demanded that her parents be brought back up to the front. So that's just powerful to me. And you can see that she's an Aquarius rising and that has so much to do with equality and humanitarian works and Saturn is there proud and Aquarius and Venus is there and is delighted. But is also starved by Saturn, which has to do with the lack of equality she got. Um, now we're here to focus on Mercury though. So Mercury was debilitated and with Rahu and with the sun. So it was a shame. So that was a rough Mercury. And, you know, she did not feel like she had much fairness in her life. You know what I mean? In, in the way that things were, were handed to her, she was more talented. She was a better musician, worked harder in all these ways than, than a lot of the people that she was around. But because she was black, she didn't get to get the success. So she felt ashamed and her culture shamed her. And we can see that it's her culture too, because um, the seventh house is to do with like the public. So maybe not her culture, but the public um didn't want to embrace her they wanted to shame her because the sun is that planet doing the shaming and the sun rules the seventh does that make sense hope so now she was also very bad at communicating and very like angry and impulsive and you know she didn't she didn't deal with her anger and her 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 wounds and stuff that easily and you know mercury has to do with communication it was with rahu and all this stuff so she had a hard time in the second house of speech she had a hard time um 
like asserting her needs. And with Rahu in the second house, you really have to be able to like stand up for yourself and your needs a lot more than usual. Um, and one can suffer from low self-esteem when Rahu's in the second. If Ketu's in the second, you can suffer from high self-esteem. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that is. Anywho, um, so that's, a, that's an ex another example of Mercury being ashamed, Nina Simone. Now here is a chart of, this is the chart of just someone like I know personally. Um, so this is not a famous person, this is an anonymous client. Um, so they're Virgo rising, and you see that Venus is in the seventh. So right off the bat, this person came to me for a farmer's market reading, and I was like, you know, just reading their chart for 20 minutes, so I wasn't going to spend too much time. I was like, oh, Venus in the seventh, you're really lucky with guys, probably. And then she was kind of like, mm, I don't know about that. Um, so then I went, okay, well, let me look a little bit further, and I realized, oh, Jupiter is starved and um, in a great enemy dignity, and there's other issues going on. Um, but we see here that Mercury, her ruling planet, is in the fifth house, but is with the sun. So her Mercury is ashamed. And so this is not as bad as some of the other placements, but she has dealt with a lot of <clears throat> toxic masculinity in her life. She's dealt with a lot of men that would basically like, appear one way, but then really be the other way and would then make her feel ashamed. Or she has had issues with, you know, the sun being starved in Capricorn can make one um, be hypersensitive to their weaknesses because that's the sun feeling starved by Saturn and all its weaknesses and that sense of frailty. And then the, the person can try to hide from that by overcompensating in all these ways. So she can meet, you have a tendency to attract men that are kind of like, not being true and they're kind of faking or overcompensating or putting up this sound and like this ring of security. And, you know, that's further in indicated by the afflicted Jupiter. But she has other really good things in her chart, like that really strong and proud Saturn and that proud Venus. So she's still got a lot of good things going for her, but she's dealt with a lot of tough, um, tough situations where men have kind of, you could say, just really blown it for her or not been responsible, not been honest, um, sort of felt betrayed, maybe even in a sense betrayal has maybe been there. Um, but I don't want to get into it too personal on situations. But, um, but that's another indication of that Mercury feeling shame, she goes about trying to make requests this is what I'm into. And then um, her father might have belittled it, you know what I mean, or things like that. A lot of times when Mercury is ashamed by the sun, it will start with the, the father because the sun is the father. So that's another interesting example. This is the chart of uh, Hillary Clinton. So we don't know her birth time. There's like five different birth times for Hillary Clinton. Um, and this is just, you know, so we can't go into it too much, but I suspect she's probably a Scorpio ascendant. And then that would make Saturn and Mars in the 10th because she was someone who was extremely, um, when you have Mars and Saturn in the 10th, you can be extremely just pushy and controlling and forceful with trying to make, make yourself go somewhere in the world. And from an objective standpoint, I think that's been the case for her without trying to be too biased or coloring it with any opinion. But, um, you know, she basically stole the election from Bernie Sanders in 2016 um, and, you know, everyone kind of agrees with that now. And, um, then she tried to blame the fact that she lost on all this other stuff like Russia. She kind of got shamed for it. Like she hasn't really, I mean, I know that the meat, the mainstream media still, I guess, supports her, but I think a lot of us who follow this stuff are kind of like aware of a lot more of the nefarious things associated with her. I mean, there is a, such a thing as the Clinton body count. That is not fake news. Um, if you guys haven't looked into that, um, but uh, you know, so basically like mer media, again, Mercury has shamed her because there's been, while the mainstream media, okay, so the mainstream media supports Hillary Clinton because they're kind of all buddies and all, she's like one of these elite figures. But at the same time, the mainstream media failed her, you see, because the media was saying, like, I remember I went to bed before that election, and it was like, the websites I looked at said Hillary Clinton had a 98% chance of winning, and that Trump had like a 2% chance. So the media did a really bad job of forecasting for her, you see? So the media would feel ashamed, but then that's also her feeling ashamed of her networking and her utilizing of the media 
her ability to, to spin, to use the spin factor, to spin things her way, like a politician with Venus and Mercury there, it's a shame. It's just not meant to go well for her in this life, you see? So it's really interesting. Um, and then Venus being ashamed again, Venus is about having a sense of fairness and fair play and she doesn't feel that way in her life. She's not felt, she's an, probably a very wounded person with all those planets in Scorpio there and has not felt like uh, she gets the same amount back for what she puts in. And um, that's also a placement for turning to drinking and drugs and alcohol, just so you guys know, um, and other forms of abuse to try to deal with that pain. But um, yeah, so Mercury and Venus are ashamed in her chart no matter what the birth time is. <laughs> and that makes a lot of sense because that person's life has been a life that has dealt with a lot of that shame. And then think about before even all this, like think about back in the 90s, Bill Clinton had his affair. Hillary Clinton was there. So she was the Venus, the wife of Clinton, and she was ashamed and all the shame was put onto her for that affair and stuff. So you can take that and run with it. Um, but yeah, it's a good example of Mercury ashamed and Venus ashamed as well. All right, we're gonna do one more. And this is the chart of just like a friend of mine, like a more local person and client. And um, we see that again, this person has their, their Mercury in the fifth house with the sun and Mars. So sun is shaming Mercury, Mars is shaming Mercury. But then what's also tough is that Mars is shaming the sun, sun shaming Mars. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, to focus on just the Mercury thing, this is that person that I think I mentioned in a previous video how, well, I'll explain the story now, but this is a person who was like at a party or had a party at her house and is a really cool, friendly girl. She was getting along with everyone, having a great time. This was sometime in the last year. She was at a party and, and basically all these people were saying how white people had no culture and like both black people and white people were all joking and laughing about it. And she was a white girl and she was Polish and she was like, no, actually white people do have a culture, like every people has culture and you can't just, you can't just say that white people don't have a culture because you read that in a Vice article or in some stupid news article. So she said that, but then everyone was just like laughing at her and making fun of her and being like, oh, look at her. She's, um, you know, she's being like a white supremacist or she is uh, trying to... <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do because I don't really get it because I also think that <clears throat> white people have had culture as all people have had. Um, but she was basically made to feel ashamed for trying to defend white people for having a culture or an art or a society of any form. And, you know, everyone else at the party was like, yeah, they just stole all that stuff from black people. Now, to be fair, they white people have stolen tons of shit from black people, right? Rock and roll is just stealing the blues and speeding up the tempo. I mean, even Rick Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones admitted that and said, that's what we did. And same with the Led Zeppelin. They were like, yeah, we just took blues and intensified it and sped it up. Um, I mean, lots and lots of things. Like I, like I was just talking about Nina Simone. I mean, there's been tons and tons of legitimate cases of racism and, you know, cubism. We give it credit to Picasso and we don't even think about the bronze of Benin sculptures in Africa, all these things, you know. But, and we, but we do the same thing to India, you know, like Sage Agastya invented the hot air balloon and isolated hydrogen and oxygen. And we don't, you know, we don't give them credit either. So it's not just black people. And she was just trying to say that, yeah, like all people have had, you know, cultures and also been kind of, you know, impoverished or this or that. Everyone just made fun of her and ashamed her and made her leave the party. And except for this one black guy who totally got it and he left the party with her too. I was like, yeah, I did totally. <laughs> but um, just to be fair, not everyone was crazy at this party. But but yeah, that's a good, don't you see how that's kind of a good example of how um, your paradigms, like your opinion, Mercury is like, hey, what about this? Or you just make a statement or you're not even sure, but you're just like, hey, what about this thing? And then if Sun is there, there's just an authority who's like, no, it's not. It's blah, blah, blah. And you're dumb for thinking that. And if Mars is there, it's a similar thing or they'll gang up or it'll be a very similar theme where someone will kind of harshly put you down. Um, that's one way that this can work. So, yeah, you know, that's um, this is how you can see these ancient Lajitadi Avastas written in an ancient, ancient Indian Shastra, how they still apply to the modern day and modern day situations. Um, now I know that this isn't enough examples. We could spend a long time on it, but 
for you guys for a free video for y'all. I hope you enjoyed that. And just think of anything, all the things that Mercury symbolizes. And if it's in that shame of Ashta, they might have a difficulty with it. And then if you want to take it to the next step, look at the dignity of Mercury in all the other Vargas and look at the dignity of the plant shaming them. And then you can see where the shame will be really felt and where the person will win out over the shame. And this is where we get into a whole other next level, collegiate level, which I wish I could teach to people, but it doesn't seem like even there's that many people even out there that are ready to learn that yet. But um, there is basically, you know, then you would take the dignities and factor in how much do they feel the shame? How much is it going to hit them? Or are they going to overcome it? Because that's the thing is if that mercury is say exalted and the other plants are really weak, then they're not, they're going to have that shame in their life, but overcome it and um, still be a great person as a result. So there's all these kinds of levels of nuances you can get to when you really um, first get these basics down under your belt. All right, you guys have fun. Enjoy. Take care.